going on folks? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a good day out here. All these animals are dying out here. No, they're not actually dying. They act like they're dying though. Look at them. They're sitting here waiting for Banjo to feed them. That's exactly what they're doing. Look at them all. Jerry, you're not, are you not still in the tree, Jerry? Oh, he's, oh my God. Wow, Jerry. What are them nuts doing, Jerry? Hey buddy, how you doing? Hey Rick, how you doing there, buddy? These guys want some grain, but today we are going fishing. Uh, I'm excited. It's cooled off. It's been like a trillion degrees, and now it's nice out. It's like 65, 70 this morning. So we are going to be doing a little bit dangle. But before we do that, we need to feed these animals because they act like they're dying out here. So stay tuned. All right, who, who wants some grain, buddy? You guys want some grain? All right, come here. <laughs> oh, oh, Rick. What? What am I supposed to do about that? I don't understand. What? I'm, what do they expect me to do with this? There. there you go. Oh, they flipped that bolt, so we gotta go back this way. Alright, here you go. Oh, hey, hey, there you go. Yep. There you go. Oh, oh, yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna shower the animals this morning. I flipped on You flipped it back? Alright, that's good. Carol! Right here, buddy. Right here. Go get yourself some. There you go. Yep. 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 There you go. You got it. Rick, right here. Hey, big boy. Big boy. This is just for you. Just for you, pal. Hey, in the dish. There you go. You got it. Oh, there you go. There you go, llama. Hey, how you doing, llama? Oh, you're so fluffy. You're all dusty. She's so soft. You pet llama roads lately? She's chilling. She's super soft right now. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Does that taste good? Do you like your grain? Why don't you just eat it out of the bin like everybody else? She still is on the on the uh, scoop duty, I guess. We gotta go feed these little asses over here. Look at them. They're, they're sitting there. They're actually being nice. I think she's gotten a less, lot less protective since we've been down here feeding them stuff. So we're gonna try to go in there and interact with the baby for a little bit and see how that goes. All right, Banj and I, we're about to go touch this ass. Hey, how you doing? We also confirmed it is a female. So we're gonna name it, a, well, we don't have to name it a female name, but it's female. Felicia, we're not here to hurt your baby. Please don't attack us. Yeah, push it, just kind of walk behind it and we'll get, that way Felicia can see it. We don't need Felicia completely destroying us. But see, you just gotta distract her with grain a little bit, calms her down and we can go over here and hang out the little ass. Hey, buddy. This is Pool Jet's first, first experience with the little ass. Look how fluffy it is. Come it's in. so fluffy. Hi, bud. It's okay, dude. Okay. It's okay, buddy. Oh my God. Hey, come back here. Hey, oh. hey, come back. Hey, Felicia, come tell your baby that we're nice. You think she would she would suck on your nipples, Banjo? She might. Hey, come here, buddy. I'm not trying to chase you. Hey, I see this girl. I think you just pick it up. Really? Just go tackle it. All right. No, don't do that. Oh. Hey, we're we're nice to you, okay? Hey, you were like less scared the other day. What's what the, what's that strat? Pool jet wasn't here. Oh yeah, she she she's, scary. she's yeah she's scared, scared of the old pool jet. Yeah. That's that's understandable. Why don't we go over by your mom and then maybe your mom will uh, talk in donkey language to tell you that we're chill. Hey, let's go let's go hang out with your mom. She'll convince you that we're chill. Go go hang out with your mom. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Come on, you got it. Get, go go get some milk. Go get some milk. Why is that chicken in here? Hennifer, what are you doing there, buddy? Felicia. Can you tell your, your child that we're chill? Or how's that work? She's not a wide load anymore. Oh God, oh, oh God, you're about to get kicked. Oh, back it up, back it up, Tiffany. Tiffany, no, don't kick the baby. No, we don't need another collateral damage. Don't do that. You see her, she's biting Tiffany's neck. Kinky. Kinky boy. Hey, you all right? Hey, hey, we're not gonna hurt you. Hey, please don't kill me. Hey, I'm your friend. Hey, come here, hey. Oh, hi, buddy. Hey, we're not gonna hurt you. We're not gonna hurt you or your baby. We're here to help. All right, all right. I guess we'll just we'll let you have your spit. Oh God, she's kicking. Relax. See, she don't kick us. She, she'll kick other animals. She don't really kick us. Anyways, the little baby, well, she's cute as can be. We, we have yet to name her, but she won't let us get close quite yet. We're just, you just got, oh God, hey, she, he, he, she. I wasn't gonna stand there for that one. kicked her. Really? Oh, hard. Hey, go get some milk. Oh God, oh, rip, rip, oh. rip, Tiffany, back it up. Oh God, oh God, oh, oh God, Lucy, <laughs> Lucy, get out of here. All right, we're stressing her out. I'm leaving. I don't want to stress her out too bad. We're trying to make an effort every single day to come down and he what's the strat here? Nice I love Hennifer. Just chilling. We're trying to make an effort every single day to come down and hang out with the baby so it gets as nice. Like Tiffany and Felicia, I mean, Tiffany's not bad, but Felicia's like the nicest donkey ever. So we would like it to kind of be the same. And I know when it's when it's little, you can't really, you know, they're going to be protective and I get it. So we're not trying to stress her out, but we want to make an effort. Otherwise, if you don't ever come in here, then you come in here in six months, that donkey isn't going to like you. And I want to make sure the donkey likes us. So anyways, with that being said, we are going to go fishing. I want to say huge thanks to Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's video. If you guys don't know what Mystery Tackle Box is, they send a box filled with fishing lures to your doorstep every 
single month. You can choose what species, whether it's panfish, whether it's catfish, whether it's walleye, whether it's bass, whatever, even ice fishing. They got everything. We've got sitting back here. Uh, we are going to be using some of the baits out of this to do a little bit of dangling. This is it right here. This is what the box looks like, filled with baits. And if you want to get your first box as low as $10, use promo code SMALLFISH. It will be linked down in the description down below. Huge shout out to those guys for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, we're going to be unboxing it when we get down to the pond, taking some of these lures out and trying to go catch some bass in the backyard pond. Since it's not a trillion degrees. Oh, there's a quail. Oh, God. Oh, God. Lucy, Lucy, oh, oh, it's up in the tree. Where'd, where'd, it, where'd it go? Lucy's already trained on these quail. She, she's all about the quail life. Come here, buddy. Good girl. Come here. I think it went across the road. We don't need you going over there. Come here, buddy. Hey, you want to go fishing? Hey, where are you going? Why are you running? Hey, don't go towards the road. Nah, she's on the road. We better go get her. Hey, you stay right here, okay? All right, anyways, we are going to go down to the pond. Like I said, we're going to be doing a little bit of dangling right now since it's not so hot, so we'll see you guys down at the pond. Release the hounds. Go get him. Go get him. Lucy, go get him, Lucy. Go get him. Lucy. Lucy! Oh, what's this? Is this your favorite toy? Can you sit? You sit. Go get it. Go get it. Oh, she cheats. She cheated. You, che you cheated. Come on, Lucy. You got it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. There you go. Like Good girl. Bird. Come on, Lucy. Yeah, she's smart. At least she knows That's to run so on the shore. Smart. I heard this is going to hurt the, I heard this is going to help the bass fishing bite. I think so. Yeah. Lucy! Come on, buddy. Bring it back. Oh, you, oh well, hey, hey, Rick! You dropped it a little too, a little too oh, soon. Well, you give her the, give her the old yeet, right? Just right in the middle. Lucy, you Rick? sit. You got sit. You sit. Sit. Oh, I'll give you a second. Sit. You ready? Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. It's not. She, she contemplated if it was closer on the <laughs> other side. She's like, all right, I guess I'll swim. Millie, you gotta go get the bumper too, or what, buddy? This is really gonna help. The, this is gonna help the water clarity here, definitely. Millie, you got it figured out. Good girl, Lucy. You're killing it. Good girl. Bring it back. Oh, okay. See you later. Yeah, you can hang on to it, I guess, if you want. Well, how do you think our uh, catfish farm's doing, Banjo? First. Oh, rip. Oh, that's good for the... It rained a little. It's good for the cords. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, the electrical cords. I think that's oh, good. That's for... doing good. Though. Oh, Lucy, oh, you just <laughs> soaked me. How do you th How do you think these are doing? Why? Yeah, why is the water so nasty? Oh, we're going to see how many catfish we still have alive, if any. Oh, I see one. a bluegill. Oh, there's some oh, yeah. catfish in there. Siri. Is there some catfish in there? Yeah. How many catfish do you think are in there? Oh, about 10, 10 15. 15. Can you see them? Oh, yeah. They're hanging out in there. All right, well, they're still alive. Hey, That's no. Good. Lucy. Lucy, Andrew, you are you stay. talking to Siri over here? Well, we still have some catfish. Is? That's good. Does this thing still have any? Yeah, this thing might be pushing, pushing, being empty. I'm not really quite sure, but water's not looking good. I'm not, I'm not sure about this guy. If, uh, well, we'll catch anything or not. We're going to take this little doohickey thing out there. We're going to drain it, uh, put the battery in it and go fishing. The dogs, you guys have to stay. You can't come fishing. You can go run around, swim and do dog things. Um, but we're, oh, rip, how'd that paddle get out there? Hey, at least it floats. I think that must've been on the old yakky. Anyways, we're going to get loaded up into the boat and do some dangling. You guys stay tuned. All aboard, Banjo. Give her help, Junior. Oh my God, that uh, was okay. graceful. Jet, you so go graceful. ahead. Adios, Millie. You stay. Millie, Lucy, don't do anything I wouldn't do. We're on the boat, folks. Ooh, yeah, we're cooking now. Look at this. Shoo! What a beautiful day. Not hot, nice and calm. Bluebirds, skies, crisp fall weather. I'm ready to catch fish. Banjo's on uh, bluegill duty, though. How's that looking? Look, Top yeah. water. Real. All right, we're going to go right to the middle here. We're going to unbox our mystery tackle box, see what exactly we are going to be dangling. So, got the box here. Like I said, if you guys want to get this, I'll leave the link down in the description down below. Use promo code SMALLFISH. Get your first box as low as $10. But a few of the baits in here that I'm going to be dangling. Right here, number one, this is the Exopod. All right, so this is Biospawn. This is what I'm gonna be tying on first to try out. We've also got some Savage Gear topwaters. We've got some hooks and we've got some crankbaits right here. We've got this guy, which is a little under underspin classic runner. Deeper diving crankbait and some Excite Baits Raptor Tail Jr. So like I said, I'm starting off with the Exopod, a little soft plastic, green pumpkin, something a little bit more finesse. Fall time, especially when you get these big cold fronts like we got going on right now, you always wanna start small downsize and move your way up. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these guys out of the package and tie it on and start chucking it around and see what happens. Like I said, Banjo's on bluegill duty. He's got some night crawlers and stuff. Look at that guy. That's gonna do it right there. So tie this guy on and see what happens. All right, folks, here we go. We got her all rigged up there. I'm throwing it on a little Texas rig, um, lightweight Texas rig. Gonna be flipping and pitching a little bit. This water is a little bit dirty, but I'm still confident that 
this bait. You're, it's got some good good kickage action. So they're gonna they're gonna feel it in their lateral line, the little action on there. So something a little bit more natural. Again, if it was super clear water, I'd probably lean towards this color. Being that it's a little bit dirty, uh, you know, this color's not bad, better than like a watermelon, but even like a little bit darker, uh, I would prefer with the, the stained water, but it's not terrible. With the sun out, they, the fish should still be able to see it. But quick tip, if you guys are fishing really, really muddy water, I like to use like a darker color. And then if it's more clear, I like to use like a natural color. That's the old tip of the day right there. How are those dogs doing? They're, they're just hanging out, see? They're, they're, they're doing better. Before, Millie would try to swim to here and it just wouldn't end well for anybody. But now that there's two dogs, they keep themselves entertained and life is good. So we're gonna flip around here, kind of enjoy our nice calm morning out on the backyard pond, see if we can catch a big one. Well, folks, so far, Banjo, how's that going? Milk toast. What do you think the deal is? I don't know, it was a cold front. You think, you think the cold front shut it down? Yeah. I, I like looked forward to it, but maybe, maybe I looked forward to it, but the fish didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sure. So far, we've got, even Banjo hasn't even gotten a bluegill bite, but we haven't fished really like the, oh, oh, hang on. Hold the phone. Rip, oh, I definitely had a fish. He was swimming with it. All right, well, Banjo, the bluegill spot's really off the dock because we got that feeder ripping. Maybe that's where the bass are too, I'm not sure, but we're at the bush streams are made of, so I would assume we're gonna catch some largies, but it's been kind of tough. I mean, I'm not like the biggest fan of fall fishing now. You know, like I, I usually do better in the spring, you know, somewhere in the early summer. Once we get in the fall though, I usually pretty much cheeks. So this is, maybe maybe we should just take this time of warm weather and us sucking at fishing to do some pond management, Banjo. You like that idea? Sure. We've talked about kind of stocking this pond in the fall. I mean, we've, we've stocked it throughout the entire year, but we stock it up with bluegills and, oh, Banjo, there's a bluegill up there. Oh, rip. Big one? Here, yeah, flip around. I mean, I mean, make make that thing go like a f maybe a foot shallower. Okay. Maybe the bluegills are really shallow because we've been fishing kind of deep. I just saw a little bluegill. We've talked about stocking this, filling it up with forage for the bass to eat in the fall and the winter because they feed up before winter. And so we wanna make sure they have plenty of food for that. And then obviously like they wanna have food throughout winter to where in the spring they're bigger. Um, since we're not really putting that much pressure on the fish in the fall fishing wise, it wouldn't be a bad idea because you don't really wanna stock like a ton of forage if you plan on going and fishing because well, the fish aren't gonna be hungry, which I mean could potentially be part of the issue that we've got going on today because there is, you know, all the bluegill had spawned, all the bass had spawned. So there is actually a lot of bait in here, but we don't want the fish necessarily eating all the bluegills and all the baby bass for food. So we've, we've been talking about, I've been talking with my buddy at Beamer. He said he, he had a couple ideas, some solutions, um, fathead minnows, crawfish and frogs. And so, you know, the more I'm sitting here fishing, the more I'm kind of contemplating, like maybe we should do that and not really like call it, oh, there's fish, there's one. Look at that. Told you the bush dreams are made of. Bush dreams are made of, son. Biggie. Shoo. Biggie. Yes, sir. What up, Ricky? Dude. Oh, yeah. See, he could definitely use a little bit of food. He's just a squeak. How's that lighting? Doesn't he? Yeah. He's just a little squeak, squeak McGee right there. But uh, eh, nothing down there. We got one, we got one fish, but that's what I was saying is uh, I might call my buddy at Beamer and see what see what his schedule is, see if he could bring a truck full of bait. Now that I'm fishing this and realizing that the fish really aren't biting that great, I'm probably you know not gonna fish a ton throughout the fall. Obviously, we got hunting, we got trapping. We're gonna be busy. We got some other projects too. We want to build ponds and cabins and stuff like that. So uh, you guys will see more fishing videos. I don't want to tell you that you're not, but the fact that we're gonna be fishing significantly less this fall than we did this spring, it probably wouldn't be a bad time to stock up and just let kind of leave the fish alone for a little bit, fish here and there. Um, just to like, you know, scratch the itch type thing. But the idea would be really to grow the fish up as much as we possibly can before spring. So we're gonna keep fishing, try to catch some bluegills, but we'll be, we've been kind of discussing some options here. And I think we might want to stock some some forage in here for these bass to eat uh, throughout the fall and winter. So stay tuned. Oh, is that a fish? So that might be a fish. Yup, I think that's a big one too, boys. Boys, boys, we got a real big fish. Oh, that's a stick. Mm, that's a nice fish. Red. <laughs> Bro, that felt like a tree pounder, son. That, that was a big one. I thought it was a big one, cause like it bit. Well, it didn't bite, but like it, it hit the stick, and then like oh, I just ran that hook right through my thumb. That was neat. I like that. Uh, the the stick, it started sliding up the stick, so I looked like it was swimming. And then when I set it, it was just going like this, and I was like, that's big mamma jamma. Hey guys, first time bass fishing out here. This is this is good. Dang, I thought that was big mama, big Sheila. Oh, there's fish. Yep. Oh God, giant PB at least, at least three pounds, 10 pounds. Chew! Dude, he ate it though. All the old axopod. Hey, how you doing? Chew! Gee, oh God, I just hooked him. Dang, I just about killed Pool Jet. That oh, went right, yeah, that went right through your shirt. Chew! Yeah. Look at that guy. Well, that's fish number two. See you later, Rick. On the old exopod, that little doohickey done did it. That's right by the bush dreams are made of. This is this is definitely the spot to be fishing this time of year, the old bush. So, well, we got another fish. I'm gonna make another cast in there and see if I can go three for three. Fuck you. 
Oh, I got another one. Three for three, baby. Let's go, son. Bush dreams are made of, baby. Oh, God, yeah. Dude, they're loaded, Banjo. We found the juice, son. We found the juice. Oh, yeah, baby. Shoo! What up, Recky? Oh, he threw the old exopod off. Bro, that was three for three. I literally found where the juice is. I didn't even hook him inside the mouth. How'd that work? Look at that. Another largey. See? They're all the same size. Stunted. We got to get some more forage here and grow them up. But uh -oh. here you go, Rick. You got a bite or what? Your dog just down here. Oh, rip. No, no. She's going back. I'm not worried about her as much as I am as Millie. Millie's like just too large to climb. Lucy, no. Oh, God. The dog's coming down the cliff. Rip. Oh, yeah. That's the cast, too. That's it, boys. Let it hit the bottom. Feel the tick. Let him swim for two seconds. Not quite two seconds. Set the hook. All right, try that again. Get the old flip inside the bush. Ooh, yeah. Let it hit the bottom. Feel the tick. Set the hook. The old wham bam. All right, folks. Uh, cast number four here. Throw it up there. Oh, God. Lucy made it down the cliff. Lucy. No. 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 Go back. No. Oh, my God. What? Lucy. Thanks, Lucy. Lucy, come fish. Lip. Lucy, you can't abandon Melly. Lip. Lip. Son of, son of a gun. Lucy. Look, where do you, where is your sister going? Where are you going? Come here. Let me get you up. Come here, Lucy. Here, lean on that side. Lucy, come. Hey. Hey. I'll leave. There you go. Come on, Lucy. Go over there. Lucy. Go over there. Lucy. Lucy. Go get him. Lucy. What was that stretch? No. <laughs> no. Hey, you left Shake. your sister. Shake. Oh, oh God. ready? Ah! Shake. Ah! Dad, I'm wet. Absolutely so Hey, why? Lucy, why? where'd Millie go? She literally scaled that whole cliff. We better go back before Millie starts. Oh, no. All right, we're going back. <laughs> Millie, follow us. Go back to the dock. Hang on. I don't want Millie coming because she ain't swimming and she ain't climbing back up that cliff. Lucy, don't get in that habit. That is not good dog. That's bad dog. Millie, go back to the dock, buddy. We're going. Lucy. That was not good. I didn't like that. Why would you do this? Well, we'll go back to the dock and let Banter try to catch a bluegill and then, well, probably call it a day because if we put Lucy back on the dock, she's just going to do the same thing and, well, she's end up getting hooked if she stays in this boat for too long. Aw, Lucy and Banjo. Look at that. That's a good IG pick. I like this really? pick. Oh, yeah. Banjo, how's bluegill duty coming? It's just not on fire today. I don't know why. It's not it? I don't know. Is it the cold front, you think? Sure. Yeah, let's blame let's blame the weather. Oh, you got a bite. Oh, no. Banjo's got a bite. Hang on. We might have, we might have just turned. Yep. Give her, give her hell. Oh, Banjo. Oh, rip. It. What the All right, throw her right back. Throw her right back. You got her. Oh, oh. Lucy, Lucy, don't bite the hook. Millie, you're not going to help the bluegill bite. You stay back. Yeah, Millie, Millie's trying to help me. That is usually the spot. I catch that, That's the juice, huh? Right around here. Really? Banjo's bluegill senses are tingling at this point. Millie's, Millie's out swimming. there. She's, she's scouting for you, Banjo. She's looking for, she's looking for bluegills right she's now. She's pushing them my way. Yeah, she's just, she's just doing hey. a little moving. Right? Hey, Lucy. Just relax. It's okay. JK, folks, Banjo sucks at bluegill fishing. Uh, <laughs> he's fired from bluegill duty, I guess. I don't know what the I think it must be the cold front. I'm blaming the cold front. That's what you do when you can't catch fish. As a fisherman, you blame the cold front uh, that came in and messed up all the fishing. But we need to give my buddy Beamer uh, a call and see if he can bring a truckload full of forage for us. Uh, we kind of talked about it throughout this video, even off camera, just a little bit on like what the strat is, the fishing kind of slowing down. It should pick up more uh, even in the fall, like towards October and stuff like that. But right now, kind of the awkward transition where you all of a sudden you get these random cold fronts. And I mean, for me at least. Oh, you got one, Banjo. Banjo. Oh, really? You Banjo, you just had one. Ty was distracting me. He was talking about TikTok. Really? I wasn't. Really? Yeah, fine. They either stole your worm or they have it because they ran it all the way under. Oh, really? Really? And you missed them. Hey, Banjo, Banjo's off yeah. his game of bluegill duty. About TikTok dancing. I guess, I guess he's a big TikTok guy. But anyways, we're going to give Beamer a call, see if he can bring some forage down, stock it up, grow our fish for the fall and the winter. Because you guys saw the, the bass we caught today, all the same size. That's kind of the strat here at the pond. We're trying to fix that. And how you fix that is by growing some bigger fish, getting them some more bait to you. So with that being said, you guys stay tuned. Shoo! Well, folks, we're down at the pond now, and look at that. We've got the stocking truck making its way down. Absolutely jam-packed full of fish and forage for our fish to enjoy. Since, like you guys explained earlier, it's kind of, you know, late summer, early fall area. We're not doing a ton of fishing anymore. Um, fishing's kind of died off a little bit, but we want to make sure that the pond is stocked plentiful full of forage for the bass to grow throughout the winter. You, as you guys may or may not know, we do have an issue with, you know, having some stunted bass. So this is this is what you do. You, you order a whole truck load of fish and forage to then stock in here and... I don't know if we're gonna we might see some fish come up and eat like right away but the idea is basically you're just stocking forage you know we've done tons of bluegill stocking and stuff like that but this is more or less uh frogs crawfish minnows stuff like that so you guys stay tuned what do we got here oh what's up junior there's a lot of them in there. look at that so that's you can see still's got a little bit of a tail there you go rick there's a lot of them oh yeah there they go 
Shoo! That is a lot of frog. This is gonna ensure Banjo's uh, frog leg eating addiction to uh, at least make it till next year, hopefully. I mean, there is a lot of frogs in there. Thousands and thousands. And some crawfish. This is crazy. You can see them swimming. Yeah, you can see them. They're just taking That's a lot of bullfrogs. That's a lot of frogs. Hunt like probably a thousand bullfrogs. This thing should be crawling with them, which it makes really, really good forage for bass. Makes them grow bigger, faster. Say, and crawfish. Crawfish are also really, really good for, for stocking as well. And like you said, there's some minnows in here. And just basically, we're just doing a forage run. Stock it with forage for the fall, for the winter. They're going to start feeding up before winter. So this is going to actually help them do that. And then whatever frogs and tadpoles and stuff survive, we'll maybe be able to harvest next spring once they turn into big bullfrogs for banjo to eat right there so that's what we're that's what we're stocking big tadpoles some of these guys who are pretty much frogs already but still got a little dangle there crawfish in there big old crowd daddies oh yeah bass are gonna be happy campers now it's just crazy look at all the frogs just sitting out there it's like just like a infested pond full of frogs got some more coming yeah. oh yeah look at these little guys Shoo! bony apple feet bass there you go. All right. Yeah. Oh God, look at all those. It's just so crazy. They're all, oh God, one's about to get, oh, rip, rip. It's so crazy to see them in the form of transition between tadpole and, and, and frog. Ready? Yeah, oh, I'm ready. Let her rip. Woo! If our bass aren't 10 pounds by spring, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh yeah. Dinner? A little small for the old catch and cook. Shoo! Well, big shot to Beamer. Shoo! Shoo! Big shot to Beamers. Uh, they, they're the hatchery that we always use if you guys are around the Omaha, Nebraska area um, and need some fish or anything like that. Beamer Fishery, it's the place to get it. But look at this. You can see all the frogs moving around, all those little dots and stuff. Like right here, you can see them all swimming around. Look at them all. All those dots out there, look at all those frogs, thousands. Literally thousands of frogs. This is crazy, I've never seen anything like this. We have not seen any bass explode yet. Um, it's also middle of the day, so I could imagine that they're not super, super shallow. Honestly though, tonight I'll probably come down here just to watch and see if these guys start getting crushed on. I mean, again, the idea, ensure that one, Banjo's got his frog legs for next spring, because we went we went through quite a few out here, honestly. I mean, we, we, we ate quite a bit, so we want to replenish that, um, and those are the ones that make it. The ones that don't, because they got eaten by bass, it's great, because it'll grow a bass, and there's also a bunch of crawfish in there and a bunch of minnows i mean we're talking thousands and thousands of forage for these bass to eat and then on top of that there's like a billion little bluegills swimming around like millions between like this and then this um which is what those feeders are out here for so the feeders we've got to grow the bluegill so they get big and then spawn and the bass can eat that the idea is i'm trying to get this pond super 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 forage heavy um you can't really have too much forage especially when you have probably i mean i would guess there's at least a thousand bass in here between the sizes of 11 and 14 inches um you know we, during a creel survey we got like a hundred but that was off like just a, oh look at this bass right here oh he ate one oh my god dude he has i can't tell if it was a crawfish or or a uh, a frog there was a there's like a two pound bass sitting here and in his mouth was completely full and you can see something hanging out of it. like he like he was trying to digest it i couldn't see quite what it was i just saw a tail so i couldn't tell if it was a crawfish i don't know if you guys caught that but it was right here i was like is that a bass that he kind of looks sick or dead his mouth was full like his cheeks were completely full and there was something sticking out so there right there that shows you that he's he's already munching um, but what I was saying is, again, there's so many, so many bass out here uh, that are in that stunted range. Ideally, you want to take some out. But instead of taking them out, I figured just stock the forage, you know, make sure the bluegill are cr going crazy. Get the get the minnows in there, get the bullfrogs in there, get the crawfish in there. So that way there's more than enough, uh, basically, bait for these bass. Now I see why we were seeing explosions. So I don't know if we, even when we were filming when we said this, but there was a there's this little bass right there. There's been, the last couple times we've been down here, there's like these little explosions kind of like up here. You can see all the fry. I don't know if you guys can see it. And basically there's bass that are coming to eat. And that's what they do is they push them up here in this co this cove in this corner. And then they start exploding on it. And that's that's what they do. That's crazy. I saw a fish that had either a, 
it was either a frog or a crawfish. I couldn't tell what type of tail it was. Since the frogs have tails, it's kind of hard to see. But anyways, that's pretty much today's video. Uh, nothing too crazy. But again, I like to document everything that we do out here, including the pond management to kind of show you guys what we do, what works and what doesn't. This is the first time we've really stocked super heavy forage. Like every time that the trucks come down here, we've thrown some minnows and some bullfrog and some uh, and some crawfish in. But like this whole truck was just that. You know, it's an entire truckload of literally just that. Um, so that was the first time we really did that. I think it'll work. We already saw a bass eat, so that's going to be a good thing. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and that's pretty much all I've got for you. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.